actually, I prepared quite a presentation because uh, I think uh, a week ago it wasn't certain whether anyone was going to join this panel. Uh, I'm going to try to keep it very, very short uh, so we get more out of, out of the conversation and interaction. Now, um, for any feedback, just hashtag brandmal, hashtag CAS. Uh, I, I will be very grateful for that. Now, I feel humbled uh, to talk about being a white guy in India and talking about e-commerce in India. I started Brandmile a year ago. It's one of uh, India's leading private shopping clubs. Uh, who of you are familiar with the business concept of private shopping clubs? Okay, a few. So let me very briefly uh, run, run through it. Private shopping clubs are along of the business model of, of deals. Um, we operate in an invite-only environment, so you have to be a member to get access to fashion brands at 70% off or accessories at 70% off, etc. And you can invite your, your friends and other members. So we use uh, word of mouth as one of the key drivers of attracting new customers. Um, the, times, the, the, the sales are time sensitive, so they end after usually uh, 24 hours to 72 hours. And there's limited stock available. So different to a group buying site where there's often no cap, there's a natural cap. Um, on, the, on the business side, so how do we operate with the brands is very similar or is very, very unique. We're solving an industry problem, which is essentially overstock, excess inventory. So any industry has excess inventory, and the fashion industry happens to have a lot of that. So after the season sales are over, they're stuck with some of the inventory, and that's where we come into the picture and help them uh, dispose that through our uh, media platform. Now, quickly, maybe history of time to contextualize in this particular segment um, what, what we are doing in e-commerce. In India, especially for maybe the foreigners here, not a few as I can see. Um, history of time, these, these type of brands were starting off their sales in hotels and airports where they naturally expected expats or, or other uh, basically people with money. That was a pre-selection. So you would see Louis Vuitton or a very expensive brand here in a hotel like Touch, but you wouldn't see it in the, in the high streets. Then it evolved and went into high streets and to department stores. Examples are the collective, maybe in the, the high-end segment, and in the medium segment, you would have uh, the department stores such as Shopper Stop, where you can buy Puma, Adidas, etc. And then lately, over the last uh, two, three years, there's been an explosion in malls, in urban malls, so all of a sudden, the distribution of these brands into smaller towns uh, is becoming bigger. Now what's the problem, especially in a market like India, um, and what's next? Um, there are a lot of problems here. One is brands don't want to be associated, they, they're looking for re real estate that they want to be associated with. So often that was not given historically. Then they, uh, they, the reach is very limited. So you have probably the majority of the brands in five cities that you would cut to call or consider fashion savvy. Now, we believe the next step is e-commerce in India, and that 2011 is going to be the year of e-commerce, uh, driven by models such as SnapDeal, uh, so a deal-centric uh, model, where clients realize that the value is online. So, personally, I view a lag in e-commerce of almost 10 years to maybe uh, Western markets. Why India? It's a numbers game. I will very briefly touch on that in the next slide. We believe that the consumer is ready, so the consumer has a sense, is tech savvy, understands the adoption cycles are a lot quicker than maybe in historic contexts because uh, the internet acts as a, as a distributor of information and people do have internet connections and infrastructure is quickly improving. Now, very briefly on the top left, uh, a takeaway, um, 72 million, this is slightly outdated, 72 million E-commerce users, that's substantial, especially if you contextualize it in the, in the second uh, sort of table. For 72 million, India is already the fifth largest internet population worldwide, okay? But it's only 6% of the actual population. So 
I'm from Germany, which is in comparison to India, a very small country. Um, 70 million, what is the actual uh, internet users in India in 2008. How many of them are active, I don't know, but uh, I presume minimum half. 70 million is the entire population of Germany. And a model like this and a lot of other internet and e-commerce models can very healthily exist on such a basis. But there's a lot of... Ah, okay. Okay. Um, so that's already... Uh, there's a, there's a, a lot of upside and there's a, a good basis for it. Now, 7% uh, engaged in, in e-commerce. We see that uh, steeply rising. And then population income, these are all pretty macroeconomic figures, is uh, substantial already in the, in the middle class and upper class, and the, 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 the lower class is quickly rising on this. Now, a little bit about the Indian consumer, and I don't want to go too much into detail here because I, these are points which are... Uh, Part to, partially to be discussed with the panel. Indian consumer, I, I like to actually compare the Indians. We are, we are very much alike, Germans and Indians. Now you would, you would say, why? <laughs> we, are, we are totally opposite, right? If you met any German, you would probably say, what, what's the first thing when you work with a German, what he would say? He would say, I need a plan, okay? <laughs> okay? I need to work according to plan, right? And you meet an Indian and he would probably say, yeah, we can solve it like Jugar or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there are very different mindsets in that, uh, in that sense. But as an e-commerce consumer, we're very similar. Why? We love deals, okay? We want value, and we are very demanding from day one. So as consumers, we are actually very, very, very much alike. And I think that will drive a lot of traffic online and to, to transact online, the value and the service that you're being delivered and the comfort from home. Um, fashion conscious, okay, they, you can take a dispute about that, I guess, um, and have a longer conversation. Um, then on the supply side, this is constrained to our model. There are a lot of fantastic national designers, such as Manish Aura here in the background, uh, or, or a boost of international brands that come into India at the moment and give, basically feed our, our business model. This slide I will probably come back to because these are some of the challenges that we face. On the consumer side, I, I actually suggest rather than me going through it, I will call them up infrastructure, um, which inherently is to us a bigger problem than to a virtual good uh, business model such as group buying, where you don't deliver physical goods. I can talk probably for an hour just about logistics. Um, other challenges are, are the ecosystem. So in the e-commerce community, there's not a lot of knowledge yet accumulated. So that's something very, very young in comparison to other markets. And uh, bureaucracy. So coming from, from Europe, uh, it can be challenging here. So I heard uh, a nice saying, the Brits introduced bureaucracy, the Indians perfected it. Uh, in parts, I, I, uh, I have experienced that in, in our business. Um, yeah, let's come back to this slide with the group. So I thank you. Uh, if you want to become a member of Brandmile, you can find in my last tweet, you can find an invite, and uh, my tw Twitter account is v VQ Index. Um, and you will also find a copy of this slide. If you want to join us as a professional marketing guy, please drop us an email, careers at Brandmile. We're looking for talent. I'll give you a little bit of, um, <clears throat> you know, history about our business, why we do what we do, and how are we doing, and, and uh, what are the challenges we see, what are the opportunities we see. Uh, first of all, I, I just wanted to get a sense of how many, how many in the audience are involved in the e-commerce business in India in some shape or form? Okay. Pretty good number. Good. <laughs> this is the right panel discussion, then. You're attending the right panel. Um, the, uh, uh, and... and and how many are operating e-commerce sites versus being service providers to them? Okay. Decent number. Great. So, you know, this to me uh, and probably to Dirk is increasing validation of the fact that there is just this explosion of, of entrepreneurship and enterprise in the e-commerce space in India. 
and I think it's it's going to just keep growing very very fast. A uh, lot of the lot of lot of people who've spent time in the U.S. and Europe are equating the 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 wave in e-commerce today uh, to what was seen in the U.S. in about '98, not '99, but '98, when when investments had just started picking up, large ticket investments were were being made into companies that were investing in infrastructure, not necessarily only in marketing. And that's how the Amazons and the Ebays, more so Amazons of the world, were created. A lot of them eventually died, uh, but, but good companies did arise. In, um, uh, now, now uh, just to talk a little bit about our business, right? So we, I, I've had some past experiences around consumer product companies that I had, a uh, consumer product company that I had started in the US, and I'd done a lot of couponing and sampling for that business because it's a completely bootstrap business. We didn't have any money. Uh, so we did couponing to promote it. Eventually, the product got into four or 5,000 stores in the U.S., uh, Oprah Winfrey Show and Wall Street Journal, New York Times. So my resolve was very strong that couponing works. I often say, you know, Indian consumers are all about um, uh, A, B, C, D, you know, astrology, Bollywood, cricket, and discounts. So as long as, as, long as you're doing one of them, uh, you tend to be in pretty decent shape. Right? You just appeal to some core DNA of the consumer in India. So we, we, we set out in about um, you know, middle of June 2008 to start a couponing business in India. And that was the premise. It was very challenging to begin with. We had no technology uh, that we were going to use because back in 2007, 2008, people, you know, other than online travel agencies, there was really no other e-commerce play in India. Uh, but thank God for them because I think because of the large amounts of venture capital money that they blew up in those years, it created the space and created the consumer willingness to actually use their credit cards, use their bank accounts to make transactions online and trust a virtual brand uh, without really having the touch and feel for them. Uh, we, we started a purely, almost a purely offline business uh, around distribution of coupons through a variety of channels which were uh, through discount cards, coupon books, et cetera, et cetera. So you know, fast forward about two and a half years, we worked with about 50,000 retailers in India across 50 cities and, um, you know, work very closely with them through a variety of media. Somewhere around uh, early 2010, uh, merchants started reaching out to us saying that we worked with X website, Y website, saying that, you know, that we got five customers or seven customers come in through that website. I think a lot of, even the, the, those websites that the merchants worked with probably don't realize the gravity of that event. For a small business in India to actually say, I had a successful campaign as per my expectations through the internet is a really big deal. I mean, it's just a watershed moment in my view. So we said, look, we already have the merchant network. Uh, we have worked with so many merchants. We are technically reasonably capable. So why don't we uh, launch a service that delivers deals online. And, you know, the, the model was well established in the developed markets at that point. So we realized, you know, this, this is plug and play for us. So we launched Snapdeal in about, um, I think, February of last year, so about 10, 11 months ago. And um, initially, we started it off as a pilot. And in a very short period of time, I would say month four, month five, we started seeing really, really encouraging traction. And sometime in September, October, it just things just started exploding. I think we probably hit a critical mass in brand recall, number of subscribers, et cetera. Now fast forward a little bit. Uh, we're now about over a million subscribers. We add a new subscriber every seven seconds. Uh, we um, uh, you know, get about 750,000 visitors on the site every day. Uh, so a very active base of people. Uh, I, I, is, do people know what group buying, et cetera, is? I'm, I'm assuming that. Should I, should I explain? Every day, there's one great deal on the site, uh, typically on a services merchants across, you know, restaurants, spas, salons, adventure, travel, short-stay travel, etc. Right? So our model is we have 300 people on the ground and who source these deals from merchants, and put it on the, we put it on the website after some screening and uh, audits. And, uh, and then people buy the deal, they get a voucher, they go redeem it at the merchant in the next two, three months after they buy it. Uh, the you know what what has been surprising for us is that the number of people who are actually open to buying um, buying a service for an offline merchant online. I mean, I was blown away. I was the most skeptical person in our in our company for us to get into this business. And I think one of the big reasons was I myself did not trust e-commerce services here. 
when I was using, used to book travel in 2008, to, uh, early 2000 uh, and 2009 uh, through online travel companies, I used to always, because I had burnt my hands like I'm sure many others have also, I was very mistrusting. Um, and I think um, uh, somehow, sometime in 2009, 2010, there were a lot of new services run by high quality entrepreneurs and responsible businesses that started coming into existence, which, which was around personalized gifting, uh, you know, fashion sale, group buying, um, you know, some good travel companies, etc. cetera. And, and, and I think that instilled a greater sense of trust in people. And I think that, that has played a key role in this space now growing at the pace at, at which it is growing, generally e-commerce. Um, one advantage we have is we don't have to deal with the infrastructure piece, which is, which is, which is very good. However, we have to deal with uh, another part in our business. So our business, if you look at it, is more of an offline business which is enabled by technology. We are not a technology business. We are not a pure play e-commerce or pure play internet business. I think no, most e-commerce plays are not pure play technology uh, companies. And I think that's where the environmental friction plays a big role in India and how you manage it is a key role. Most large internet companies, e-commerce companies in India, whether it's a Nokri, whether it's, um, you know, you, you take your pick. Any large internet company typically would have a very large offline sales team here. You know, Nokri, I, I, I don't know, I may be wrong, but last I was reading somewhere, they have 1,600 employees out of which over 1,000 are in sales, right? Um, so that's not really a technology business per se. It's a technology-enabled business with, with huge offline sales forces. And that's how our business is also. I think that's the fundamental difference between how these businesses are being built in India versus how they are being how they have been built in developed markets, wherein they're very technology centric, much more so than they are in India. Um, and, and I think being able to manage sales processes for offline employees and sales teams is one of the biggest contributor to anyone's success or failure. And that's why companies in India have struggled to succeed in our space because they do not have the wherewithal to do that. Uh, we are a marketing company that got into the internet space. Most people in our, our peers in the industry are, are internet companies trying to get into a marketing business. Uh, and that's the latter is, I can imagine, to be, to be fairly challenging. Not impossible, but fairly challenging. Um, one thing I wanted to mention, which is not really related, but I'll mention it anyways. Um, we were discussing, Dirk and I were discussing it earlier. There's a lot of, I saw a lot of boards around social media, etc. cetera, here. Uh, I wanted to get a sense, you know, for... for uh, and we can maybe make this into a discussion thereafter. Um, you know, effectiveness of social media for e-commerce sites, right? Um, I, uh, our experience, we have like, I don't know, three, 300,000, 400,000 fans on Facebook, and we have maybe 20, 30,000 followers on Twitter. Twitter has worked much better for us for, as a transactional platform to drive uh, sales and drive virality. It has worked tremendously well for us. How many of you have actually shopped in India on an e-commerce site? Okay. And how many of you use your uh, credit card while doing that? So you're the future. That's great. <laughs> that's a, that's, that's a, a huge percentage. Um, our percentage, we, we offer various forms of payment. One of them is COD. Okay. Um, our business model delivers actual physical products. Okay. So it's not... A travel you book online it's not a uh, ticket or a voucher it's a physical product so this is where I think it was addressed already the touch and feel is still very important so we experience something like I would say around 60 to 70 percent COD orders cash on delivery okay so that is also one of the challenges because COD itself has inherently a lot of problems uh, on the logistical side. So not on the traditional e-commerce, but on the log logistical side. You have to, the company needs to collect money. The, if you're dealing in, in luxury or semi-luxury or even mid-market segment, you're dealing in maybe 10, 10,000 at the high end, 20,000 uh, rupee products. So this is uh, all of a sudden a risk for the logistic company. And the logistic company is afraid that um, one of their employees who earns 10,000 rupee a month is running away with that money. So all of a sudden, there's a natural barrier where you don't find an actual service provider who is willing to work with you because it's a risk. 
Um, now, trust. How do you get the people to trust? How do you get them to do the first transaction? You can have millions of members very quickly in a market like India, but how do you get them to transact and trust you? Now, as we are an invite-only community or a platform where you can only get in by a referral, that is our strongest, our strongest trust builder. So if, if we do a good job, which I hope we do, so other than our competitors, we are focused on getting the basics right and the logistic and the customer experience and you know, customer care calls being picked up, being replied in a certain time frame, et cetera, et cetera. So really building, building the business around the customer. Um, if you get that right, you have a very strong candidate somebody who refers you. And in our case, um, you actually get 1,100 rupee if you refer somebody who shops on our website. So on his first purchase, you as an inviter get a store credit of 1,100 rupee. Now, ironically, that's fantastic, right, for consumers. But ironically, we go back to point number one, trust. So even though we offer this, this uh, what is for us a customer acquisition tool, you get mistrust. So people say, this is a scam, you're not going to pay me because it's very new. So I'm not, I'm not, not saying um, it's wrong, but it's very new. So there's a lot of, and that's a big, big issue which is connected to trust, there's a bit of, big of an educational gap when it comes to e-commerce. Okay. And if you compare that to the, um, to the West, you can almost, in some situa situations, if you don't do a good job as a company, this is an explosive combination. Why? Because if you compare the history of e-commerce and social media in other markets, so developed markets, you would have had e-commerce starting off, setting the the terms and condition on how e-commerce is being done and what applies so you cannot go into a shop and dictate the terms and condition and ask for further discounts or whatever. But in India, and then came social media, so the enhancement of your voice as an internet citizen. In India, it's the other way around. Or it's, it's a medium in between. So first, I think the majority of the people or especially a younger generation, is very web savvy and is very aware of their right as a social media native. So they share, they tweet, they um, blog, and that can be positive or it can be negative. Right? It can be positive uh, if you manage to do a good job on the customer care experience and if they understand that terms and conditions apply to, for instance, a business that you run. Um, but it also can be a negative. So you have to, when you run an e-commerce website, my advice is really get the basics right, get the rules out there very early on to avoid any damage. Um, I only can say that, that some of our competitors maybe didn't uh, develop the infrastructure right to manage some of that risk. And when you do searches, you will see this. In our case, uh, I think we have done an okay job and uh, we'll continue to do so.